Hi, welcome back to the channel and thanks for joining me once again. Uh, another model kit review today and we're doing uh, another tank. Well, actually, a tank destroyer. Yes, it's the Achilles which is based on the American M10 I think it is, a uh, tank destroyer. Um, this is quite a recent one that Tamiya brought out in, I think it was about September of last year. Quite recent. Um, and I'm told it's very, very nice, so let's have a look at what we got. So, first of all, it's 35th scale, of course. Um, something that really attracted me to this was these, um, the, the promise of some more uh, Tamiya nice figures. I recently reviewed the Sheridan tank, and that had got absolutely beautiful figures in it, and I'm told that these are similar, so let's have a closer look, huh? So here we go. Uh, we have four figures, I think, we've got in this one. So we've got quite a nice uh, offering. We've got the, all the whole crew, uh, because of course this is a very open tank. It's uh, it's not a true tank. It has no roof on the turret. Um, it, it's just literally open to the elements. So that's great in terms of modelling because you can see a lot more detail. And we've got one, two, three, four really nice characters, which if they mould them right will be brilliant. And then here on the side we've got a bit of uh, bit of a sort of colour call out. It shows that it's the 82nd Anti-Tank Regiment, 1st Division, Italy, October 1944. So these are going hunting the Jagged Panther like we saw in my previous video. Let's have a look at what we got then. Get right way up. Here we go. So, I'm going to put over the uh, instructions, I think. Oh, there's a lot of sprues actually for this. A lot of sprues. I'm surprised, I thought that would be... More modest, it's a stuffed box. So, let's have a look at the old uh, instructions. So, M10 2C Achilles. So, this is another classic example. So, what we've got here is basically it's got the, uh, I think I'm right saying it's got the 17 pounder gun that was featured in the, uh, the Sherman Firefly. Um, and I'm just noticing that there doesn't seem to be any data about the tank, which surprises me. Ah, here we go. Yes, there is. It's this new Tamiya thing where they do it separately. Here we go. So, what do we have? It was on Japanese to start off with, so that's not, not that helpful. Okay, let's go to the British version. Yeah, so, yeah, so it's a 17 pounder gun directly from the Sherman Firefly, and they've put this into the American M10, and that's what you end up with. So, same principle as the Firefly idea, really. Um, Nice information sheet, tells you all the specifications, everything you need to know is going to be there, and then it's in other multiple languages. Very good. Right, back to the instructions. So, <laughs> here we go. Oh, you go straight into construction. So, you build up the floor, and then you build up the side panels. Um, it's not a bathtub style, it's, uh, it's built piece by piece, but if that was another manufacturer, you'd start to get worried, but with Tamiya, it will be perfectly precise and it will go together absolutely fine. I am confident. Then we've got the rear panel, um, and then you've got the lower hull at the front, which looks very, very Sherman-like, because it's essentially based on a Sherman, of course, um, just different armour and, you know, a different style of uh, uh, vehicle, but it's the same chassis. Then we've got... Uh, the idle wheels and then the tracks. Now the tracks are, now don't be horrified, but the tracks are what we call elastic band tracks. Now normally that's a, a, a time to start panicking because they're usually absolutely awful. And we call them elastic bands because of course they're like a lucky band and they go around like so. Oops, there we go. And then attach. Now I am reliably informed that these there we go, look at that. It, it, it's beautifully engineered. That is a really good fit. It just goes in and it locks. And it's seamless, so let's not worry about it. Um, and this is going to take a lot less time than that Meng uh, Yag Panther that we saw, and like a lot of Meng kits and, and others, uh, where you have to build the tracks link by link, which takes forever. Okay, so, the main construction. 
you basically go in with starting with the road wheels, drive sprockets, idlers and then the bogies. Uh, it looks very Sherman like of course because um, it is and then they attach to the hole that you've already built like so. And then you attach your <laughs> rubber band tracks um, which really should be you, you attach it with the idler wheel so to be honest uh, that's going to be pretty easy because it just sort of swings in good good design clever idea then we've got the underside of the hull and then you're making up the sponsons at the side with all these 17 pounder shells in then you've got your sponsons at the side being attached and then you've got the various parts on the upper hull going on all sorts of additional upper hull parts including spare links for the tracks on both sides and then you've got your tools various tools going on the back spades, hammers and crowbars etc you bring your upper hull and your lower hull together and then you're attaching all the hatches and ancillary parts, spare track and various little items like lights and protectors on the front of the hull and then the gun breech. Then you've got the gun breech. Gun breech 1, gun breech 2. I think there's two options, okay. Oh, and gun breech 3. So you've got three different gun breech options here. So that's fine. And then you're doing the interior of the turret. And this is really weird because so it's a turret, it's got no roof. It's got a Sten gun though, as you can see, well, that's good. That's got to be good. Anything with a Sten gun in it is good to me. And there's Sten guns all over the place here. Yeah, there's several Sten guns, look at that. <laughs> and then you're putting in your 17 pounder shells. So there's 17 pounder shells just about everywhere. Um, and of course, because you haven't got the problems of the hatch or the roof, getting in the way and you know causing an access issue you just step out of it so it, it leaves more room for them to store all sorts of items especially ammunition on the side then you've got the top piece of the turret that protects the gun then you've got uh, all these small uh, fixing parts that go on the top of the turret and then the counterweight this is the counterweight to the gun that goes on the back and it has storage bins in it and that is added and then you get onto the gun itself now the, again the gun barrel in this kit has also been moulded in one piece so I guess it's a slide moulded piece and it's got the, uh, the anti muzzle, is that a muzzle brake? I, I can never work out if this is a muzzle brake or a kind of barrel weight, I think it's a barrel weight actually and then we've got the gun going in itself And then we attach the turret itself, and then we then we start to get into these figures. And I've got to say, I'm optimistic that these are going to be brilliant because we've just seen what Tammy and I did on the Sheridan, and this this has come out since the Sheridan. So the standard that they set on that was best figures I've seen in a standard kit, I think, at that scale. So shows the angle of the turret and what it should be at. And then it shows the positioning of the gunner and all the positioning of all the characters in the actual turret itself. Which is brilliant. I mean, that's really nicely done. Good clarity as well, explaining how they should be, where they stand, where they sit. And then we've got the uh, M2 50 cal machine gun. It's 20mm, 20, 20 isn't it? <coughs> Excuse me. 20mm cannon. And then we've got the ammunition boxes and the cannon going on. Shows how the cannon should be positioned. And then finally you've got all the little extras that go on the side of the hull. Knapsacks, rucksacks, helmets, uh, extra shells, shell casings. And there's also the towing, uh, tow cables etc. And then we've got the painting and marking details at the end. Well, seems very straightforward. Let's have a look at the actual kit see what we got and we'll be delving into this one a bit better than the last one I've already got the 
bag Z. So we've got two identical sprues first of all and we have a day straight away they look fantastic now then so we've got the bogey wheels we've got the bogey suspension pieces and the drive shaft arrangement and then we've got here the turret ring with gears on it and then other side we've got more of the bogey components the basic bogey chassis frame and we've got the drive sprockets um, now I've got to say to you that this is striking for a Tamiya because it's just a bit sharper. The detail is finer, sharper. Yeah, it's not softly moulded at all. That's really finely done. That's an excellent sprue. There's two of those. So let's just pop that back in there like so. Sometimes it's been a bit awkward. It's been very awkward, don't you? <laughs> right. Let's switch the on. Next one. Now then. This is a sprue that's got some of the uh, turret, gun, and some of the figures, I think. Now, oh, now then, now then, we're in business. So we've got the turret sides. I don't forget this is a, this is a roofless turret, roofless and ruthless. <laughs> uh, and the gun mantlet is here. That looks really nice. And it's got the kind of cast, the cast metal moulding effect has been moulded into it. Can you see that? That is really, really good. Oh yes, that's excellent. Then we've got the gun, 17 pounder gun. And then, and then we get into the figures. Now look at this. Look at this, look at this. That looks very, very good. Very reminiscent of what we saw in the Sheridan. Yeah, that looks very, very nice. It's, uh, I think that's the commander actually, the figure that you're looking at. Well, if you look at this one, look at this one here. The guy with the goggles on, this reminds us of the, the driver that was in the Sheridan again, doesn't it? So we've got a guy here. Got the other guy here, he's got his field goggles on for driving. So I guess that he's the driver. <laughs> That's very nice. Lots of finely moulded parts here. Amazing. And yeah. Even the tunics look realism to them you know fine detail on the actual uh, the way the cloth appears it looks real it's, despite the scale it just looks I think if you paint a wash this it's going to look absolutely incredible Give a little bit of a dusty look I think as chaps because it was quite dusty in Normandy in Italy both places um, separate bag there it is. this is the front of the hole and again you can see this this casting effect where you get the casting and it looks like the real cast metal of the actual tank yeah. hmm 
Very, very nice. Got all the small parts and towing hooks and things. Ah, well this is actually still stapled in, so I think we'll probably leave it there actually, not, not interfere with that. Um, so it's the... Second thoughts. I think they're stapled, I'm going to liberate it from them. There we go. Right, for that. There we go. I'm not going to cheat my viewers, I'm going to show it. As it really is. Look at this. Yes. Yes, that's very nicely moulded. Very, very nice. Mm. Looks absolutely fantastic. What's any problem with that? Put back in there. Now then. Here we have a bag with some turret parts, parts of the rear of the gun, 17 pounder. Now then. Here's the counterbalance at the back of the turret. And then we've got some more of these amazing figures. Here we go. Oh yes, those are really, really excellent. And there's such detail on the faces and there's no mole lines and seam lines or flash. Look at this, I've even got here. We've even got here a little pair of binoculars, would you believe? Look at this. See that? Binoculars. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. And we've got the back of the uh, the back of the cannon gun itself. We've got a few items of tooling tools I should say. <coughs> There's uh, rods for moving the tracks. There's an axe. Fantastic. But those figures are exceptional I'd say. The creasing in the clothes it just looks real. Okay it's a little bit more of a dull sprue. The side plates the chassis sponsors. There is one or two interesting points. There's a very very nice spade there. That's very very cool. <laughs> that that is a wrench. It's like a big torque wrench. Dealing up the the, uh, the bolts on the wheels, I think. That's impressive. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. Flawless. Flashless. Oh, it's not to like. There are lots of sprues though, I can't believe how many sprues there are for a tank. There's a heck of a lot. Must be a dozen. Right. So we've got some of the interesting little parts there. Two of these. Oh yes. So what we've got, we've got the 17 pounder shells themselves. 
Then we've got some of the soldiers rucksacks, tarpaulin, Tommy's helmets, revolvers, revolvers look at that and then amazingly the stem guns look <laughs> fantastic yeah love it like that very very nice Still got more to come, I can't believe it. Lots of parts, there they are. Mm -hmm. Oh, you'll meet again. Don't know when. Sorry about the singing, it's just still in my head that from the week. <laughs> weekend. It's been VE Day celebrations for the 75th anniversary. Now then, we've got 20mm M2 cannon. Yeah, that is beautiful. Really nicely done. It's got the ammunition boxes as well beneath it. That's got the barrel. That's really nice. Awesome. It's got its own little bag. I guess that's because it's used in other kits, you know. So it's a uh, Crossover. Then, I think we're coming to the end here. Yeah? This is the last one, which is kind of not the best one to end on, but it's the chassis parts for the. Uh... Oh, I don't know. Let's have a look at this. Let's just see. Look at this. We've got here the floor. You can see the texture of the floor. Yeah. Steel. Um, Forged steel texture for grip. That's really impressive. Now you've got the uh, filters on the back. And you've got the floor itself underneath, underside. Very detailed, lots of access hatches. Absolutely brilliant. Wow, okay. So, a lot of stuff. A lot of parts, a lot of parts. So, there we go. That is the Tamiya British Tank Destroyer M102C Achilles. And I have got to be honest and say, in danger of sounding like a sort of broken record because it's just brilliant. It's one of the nicest tank kits you'll ever you'll ever get your hands on. The moulding quality is so fine. Look at those the figures, a bit like the Sheridan figures are oh, just sublime. They look fantastic. They're like aftermarket resin. Very, very nicely moulded. Features in the face are good. The creases in the clothing looks real. And you know, you get them a bit dusted up and a bit dirtied up. They're going to look probably better than the actual characters do on the box. <laughs> anyway, I hope you enjoyed the review. That's a big thumbs up from me. That's definitely a highly recommended kit. That's uh, one of the nicest tank kits I've ever seen, really. Um, it's an interesting subject anyway, but um, they've executed it just beautifully. So, 10 out of 10. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the vid. Uh, thanks for joining me. I uh, hope uh, you will... Uh, Join me for future videos. In the meantime, please stay safe, uh, look after yourselves, and thanks for your time today, and I hope to see you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye for now.